Friday practice is over and the fastest driver of the day was Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. But what did we learn from today? Well, I'm going to be doing a data analysis from practice. If you enjoy the video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now, let's get straight into the video. As usual, I'm going to be talking about the top five teams, which is Aston Martin, Mercedes, McLaren, Ferrari and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. Yes, Friday practice is over and we saw a lot of mistakes today, and mistakes that were being punished as Albert Park with grass and gravel runoff was being as unforgiving as it usually is. We saw damage to Verstappen, Alonso and most notably, Alex Albon, who had a big crash. Drivers don't get out of jail for free around this circuit, unlike at Bahrain and in Saudi Arabia. In between the incidents, we saw Lando Norris top the times in FP1, but in FP2, the fastest driver by some distance was Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. Let's now compare the times to see how the circuit changed from FP1 to FP2. As you can see here, the times improved by over one second between the two sessions showing that there was a lot of circuit evolution, which you would tend to expect around this circuit. Also, the power units, as usual, are definitely turned up more for FP2 when you compare to FP1. And you can see that as Charles Leclerc was able to reach 321 km per hour, whereas for Norris, it was only 316 km per hour. As the circuit has improved, you can see once again how Leclerc can carry more minimum apex speed in the corners as well. Turn 1, for example, Norris is at 179 kph, but Leclerc can carry 189 km per hour just because he has more grip and the circuit has come towards the drivers and they can push and carry a lot more speed. Going into the final couple of corners as well, you can see Leclerc has a lot more speed. He can carry full throttle for longer, giving him a big speed advantage. As we go into qualifying, it will be exciting to see how the circuit continues to evolve and come more towards the drivers as they continue to push harder and harder. In practice, we also get a good idea about downforce levels, and we can see that when we look at the top speeds that they're able to reach. So for that, I've brought up the top speed from each team. As usual, I am going to be taking the fastest times from each team and looking at the top speed that they were able to reach. Well, what we can see is that there is actually not that much to tell between the teams this weekend. There is not really anyone who is massively off, which is interesting because there is a lot of wing differences this weekend. However, I think the reason for this is because the circuit doesn't feature any massive straight section, and because of that you can't really see that many differences. There's only a couple of kilometers per hour this weekend. Top speed might be similar across the board this weekend, but in the midfield, you can still see what teams are looking good and what teams are not so good. Well, one team that's not looking so good in my opinion is Williams. And yes, they do have decent pace, but it looks like they're only going to be entering the Australian Grand Prix with one car. And that is because Alex Albon destroyed his car in FP1 and he damaged the chassis. And Williams didn't think to bring a spare chassis. And so that means Logan Sargent is going to be stepping aside and Albon, who crashed the car, is going to be taking his place. It kind of makes sense, even though it's absolutely brutal. Albon is clearly the faster driver of the two, even though he damaged the car. Logan Sargent also had a big spin, so it does look like Williams might have some pace, but they don't have a stable car right now. And even though I think it is harsh on Logan Sargent, it does make sense. Points are going to be very difficult for the midfield teams to get this year. And because of that, they need their fastest driver. And sadly, Albon is the one who's most likely to score some points. So for Sargent, he is just going to have to sit this one out. Williams might not be looking the best, but in the midfield, RB... They look like they could be having a better weekend. Going into the season, I thought that they would be the team that competes against Aston Martin. But it's not really materialised like that. But today, Sonoda was P10 and Ricardo was P12. In between them was Joe Guan Yu in the Sauber as well. So let's compare their fastest laps. 
to see how Sonoda beat Joe. When you look at these fastest laps, you can see that pretty much the straight line speed is very similar between them, with Joe having a very slight edge. However, when it came to the heavy braking zones, you can see that Sonoda is able to carry a little bit more speed than Joe, showing that the RB has a little bit more downforce and they have some more confidence. This lap gave Sonoda a few tenths of an edge, over Joe, and in the long runs, you can see that as the run begins, Sauber is slightly faster, but as the run continues, Sonoda starts to get better pace, showing that the RB could be even better when the run continues, as they may have a little bit better tyre wear this weekend. So for me, this weekend, it looks like they are the team that are going to be looking most likely to score a point if anything happens to the fast cars ahead. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video so far, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 5 teams, starting with Aston Martin. For Aston Martin, today was a strong day and they look like they can absolutely get amongst McLaren and Mercedes, as Fernando Alonso and Lance Stroll were 4th and 5th, even with some slightly scruffy laps when pushing. For Aston, they are looking great. Let's now compare the laps of Stroll, who was 4th, to George Russell, who was 6th. And when you look at these laps, you can see it is very close between the two drivers. But Aston Martin is much better right now when it comes to high-speed downforce. Because as we go through turns 9 and 10, you can see Stroll is able to carry significantly more speed. This is where Aston Martin are looking good, but what about the longer runs? Because this is where Aston have struggled in the past. Well, so far, it's looking pretty good when you look at the longer runs. Aston looked stronger here as well. This could be a great weekend for them, and they have the opportunity to close the gap to Mercedes and McLaren, who are currently ahead of them in the championship. For Mercedes, today was very difficult in my opinion. Russell was P6 and ahead of both McLarens, but the car does not look stable at all through the high-speed corners. Russell and Hamilton were both really fighting the car and struggling even going over the runoff areas multiple times. There is a lot of work for them to do if they want to compete. Right now, they are the fifth fastest car this weekend, and you can see that when you look at the long runs of Russell to the two McLarens. We already saw that they were behind Aston Martin, but here you can see they are also a little bit slower than McLaren. Mercedes, like I said, have work to do. Hamilton was down towards the back of the field as well, and he was compromised when it came to his fastest lap. He doesn't really have any consistent long runs either, because he was making a lot of changes to his car. Russell did have some longer runs, so it's going to be interesting to see what they can do to bring that car forward. I think they may need to run a little bit more downforce, just so that they can get through the high-speed corners. For McLaren, today was a decent day. Lando Norris topped FP1, and in FP2, they looked somewhat strong. Piastri was P7, and Norris was only P9, which, okay, I admit is not the best, but when it comes to the longer runs, it looks like they are ahead of Mercedes. And so with that, there is a good chance that they can extend their edge over Mercedes in the Constructors' Championship. Let's compare the fastest lap of Piastri to his teammate Lando Norris to see where Norris lost out this time around. In the first part of the lap, Norris is actually faster and has a slight edge over his teammate as he carries more minimum apex speed through the first couple of corners. However, when it gets to those final few corners, Norris has a little snap, and so he loses time to Piastri, and you can see that on the telemetry as Norris loses speed here. And this is why he didn't beat Piastri today. In the longer runs, Norris does have a few tenths of an edge over his teammate, which we do typically see. This could then be a good weekend for them, and we could see them fighting Aston Martin. I think it's going to be very interesting to see in the longer runs which team wins out between those two. For Ferrari, today was probably the best day that they could have had. Charles Leclerc was the fastest driver of the day, and Carlos Sainz, despite not being 100%, was third fastest. The car is looking very strong so far. So, let's compare the times of the two Ferrari drivers to see where Sainz is losing out. In the first corner alone, you can see that Leclerc carries a lot more speed, and also at the high speed turn 9 and turn 10, you can see Leclerc is able to scrub less speed off as he flies through there. This for me shows the difference between Leclerc, who is fully fit, and Carlos Sainz, who is still recovering. Leclerc is looking mighty strong this weekend, 
and his race pace right now is looking pretty impressive as well. So much so that he could even be in a position to take the fight to the Red Bulls. And finally for Red Bull, this is not looking like a straightforward weekend for them. We saw Verstappen damage his floor in practice one, and in practice two he lost some time at the start and he couldn't match the lap of Leclerc. So let's compare the two laps to see where Verstappen lost out. When you look at these two laps, Leclerc is very confident. You can see him carrying more minimum apex speed, which we've seen with other laps as well, showing just how confident he is. And it's very impressive when compared to Verstappen. However, when you get to turn 9 and turn 10, this is where Verstappen absolutely flies. The high speed downforce on that Red Bull is a thing of beauty, and this is where they are immensely strong. But then going into the last couple of corners, you can see that actually Ferrari looks a lot more comfortable. We saw that last year how Ferrari was strong in the slower speed and on the brakes, which is why they were so strong at circuits like Monza when they were able to stop the cars from high speed. And it looks like this could still be the case. It is hard to look at the longer runs due to Verstappen making some changes, but it does look like that we have a fight this weekend between Ferrari and Red Bull. So, what are my top 5 qualifying predictions? Well, I think in P5, it is going to be Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari. Even though Ferrari is mighty fast, he is still recovering, so I can see him only being P5 in qualifying. P4 will be Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin. P3 will be Lando Norris if he can nail the lap. P2 will be Max Verstappen. And for pole position, I am going to go for Charles Leclerc. Qualifying is going to be very exciting and very interesting. But what do you guys think will happen? In the comment section down below, let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.